Welcome back, Inventors. This is the seventh installment in the video series, and we are going to cover conditional statements and loops, specifically in Python. And just a little introduction. Again, my name is Zach Mitzel. I'm a freshman at the University of Michigan, and I'm hoping to get a degree in chemical engineering. Uh, this is me at kids camp. I was a counselor this over the summer, and I really enjoyed working with the kids. Uh, I had a great time. As you can tell, I have a, a nice hairstyle here with some nails done and some makeup on my face. And my favorite number is 23. I've always been superstitious about wearing prime numbers, so I've worn 23, 17, 19, 7, a lot of different prime numbers, and I've just always stuck with them, and 23 is my favorite. Uh, our agenda, we're going to review Python operators and variables, and then we're going to get into conditional statements in Python, and loops in Python, and go over the syntax, and the different types of loops, and then we're going to combine conditional statements and loops. And the only materials you need are a computer with Moo downloaded and installed, or a different version of Python. And so just a quick review, variables in Python, you don't need to declare the type of variable that it is. Uh, Python recognize it, recognizes it on its own. So types include ints, floats, booleans, and strings, and the operators are arithmetic, assignment, comparison, logical, just like in Java. And now I'm going to kind of go over the structure of conditional statements. So what we have here is right conditional statements here. And I'm gonna go back to my weather example create several variables. Is raining is false? Is sunny is false? You're welcome to do this along with me, or you can just watch. Is snowing equals false? Rain. Rain. Oops. Not camel case. Jacket is false. Rain. Sunscreen equals false. Green coat equals false. Be prepared equals false. All right, now that I have all my booleans uh, initialized and declared, I am going to create a series of if statements. So if is no, not capital if is raining. And we're gonna so this is again saying if is raining equals true. There's the implied the implication there. And you're gonna use a colon here and then when you hit return it'll automatically indent for you. You need to make sure your code is indented properly otherwise the following statement will not run. So if it's raining you're gonna want to bring your rain jacket probably. Um, we're going to want to write an else if, which in Python is E-L-I-F, elif, and elif is sunny. Well, if it's sunny, we're going to want to bring some sunscreen, so bring sunscreen equals true. Well, what if? It is snowing. Well, then we're going to want to bring our coat because it's going to be cold out. Although, if you're like if you're like me, you think you're impervious to the cold and you don't ever bring a coat, and then you get very cold very easily. And finally, if it's not raining or sunny or snowing, you just need to be prepared. I think. Be prepared for whatever. So, 
if we were to run this code, it wouldn't do anything. I will save this as six. It's not going to do anything right here because there's no print statement or anything interactive. However, be prepared does have a value of true. So if I were to print be prepared, what would happen? True. Aha. Uh -huh. And if I were to print, say, anything else, we'll go bring coat. Oh, bring coat is false. All right. Now we're going to look at loops. So first of all, we're going to go over the while loop. And I'm going to set two numbers, j equals i, actually. And if you're setting j equal to i here, that just means that j takes the value that i is right now, but that doesn't mean that in the future if i changes, that j automatically changes either. Uh, we are going to write while, while i is less than 5. So, inside our while loop, we are going to increment j by 1, and the plus plus operator doesn't work in Java, so you're just going to use the plus equals operator, and so j is going to increment by 1, and then i, we're going to increment by j, and then we're going to print i, and if you would like to pause the video and take a moment and just kind of think about what's going to happen here, what numbers are going to be printed, uh, you can do so. So if we were to hit the run button right now, it's going to be 1, 3, and then 6. And if we look at this, we can figure, the, figure how that works out. So i is initially 0, and so is j, because j is initially i. And then j is going to increment by 1 because i is less than 5, so we're going to go through this while loop. j is going to increment by 1, so j is 1. i is going to increment by 1, because j is 1. So then we're going to print i, which is 1, so that's here. i is less than 5, because it's 1. j is going to increment by 1, so it's going to become 2. i is going to increment by 2, because j is 2. And now i is 3, and we're going to print i, which is 3. I is 3 is still less than 5. We're going to increment j by 1 again. j becomes 3. i is going to increment by j again, and 3 plus 3 is 6. So then i, when we print i, it's going to be, it's going to print 6. And then 6 is no longer less than 5. So we are kicked out of our while loop and done. So that is the while loop. And then let's do a quick example of a for loop. So for a for loop, say k equals 2, and for l in, in a range, range is a function as well, and it'll just kind of go through the code a certain number of times. So in this case, it'll execute three times, and for loops are really well supported in uh, Python using or, or lists because you can um, go through for each element in this list. So I'll talk about that in the future, but for now we're just going to exponentiate k by 2, and then we're going to print k. And if you would like to guess what this is going to print, uh, you can do so. So, if we stop running this, and if we run this, we are going to print out 4, and then 16, and then 256. And this is because at first k is 2, k is uh, 2 squared is 4, so that's going to print 4, and then l is going to, 
Now this is going to execute again, a second time. k is 4, 4 squared is 16, we're going to print 16 now, and then we're going to execute it one more time because the range is 3, and 16 squared is then 256, so then it's going to print that. So pretty straightforward. And now we're going to combine, combining loops and if statements, sorry, conditional statements, it will be an if statement, but let's say m is equal to 0, and while m is less than 100, m is going to increment by 3. And if m mod 7 equals 0, then Got the if this happens, then we're gonna break. And this break keyword just automatically kicks you out of the loop. And then we're gonna print M. But this print statement is out of the loop, so it's only gonna print the final value of M. So if we were gonna if we were to go through this, my guess is it's gonna print 21, because if m goes up by 3 all the time, the soonest it's going to uh, divide by 7 and leave no remainder is when it is multiplied by 7, so it's at 21. 21 mod 7 would be 0, and then it would break out of this while loop, and we would print 10. So let's see. It is, in fact, 21, and... I am going to return to the presentation just for a second. We covered that. Our activity, we're going to create a loop with one or more conditional statements that determines whether any given number between 10 and 100 is prime or composite. And then we're going to print out the prime factorization if it is composite. So you'll need to use the modulus operator for prime numbers up through 7. And then you're going to test this code out using the following numbers. And I will let you pause the video. My solution for this activity is to create this number value, which this activity would work very well as a function if we wanted to do that. Anyways, using a while loop with a lot of if and elif statements, this is going to say, while a number is greater than 1, because 2 is going to be the smallest prime number. If that number mod 2 is 0, so if it's even, you're going to print 2, because 2 is going to be one of the prime factors. And then you're going to divide by that 2 value, so you have that number. And then you're going to go through... So this, this will print... If you wanted to just print the prime factorization in any order, you could use if statements for all of these instead of elif. But I'm going to use elif so that it goes through all the twos first. It'll tell me how many twos, pretty much, and and then I'll go in order of increasing. And so for 91, for example, the prime factors are 7 and 13. And quick thing, uh, right here, this integer, um, this this is a built-in function that just converts an object, which can be a string or a, a float, into an integer. So this way, it didn't point, it didn't print seven and thirteen point zero. It printed seven and thirteen. And in this case, ninety-one. It got through all of these because. 91 mod 2 is not 0, 91 mod 3 is not 0, 91 mod 5 is not 0, but 91 mod 7 is 0, so we printed 7, we divided by an equal 7, or divided by 7, and that left it with 13, and then we went through the, the loop again because 13 is greater than 1. However, 13 is not divisible by any of these numbers, so then it came to this else statement, else print the integer version of that number, and then break to get out of the loop.
and that's what it did, 7 and 13. And if we wanted to test it with 59 and 87, all we would have to do is change this to 59. So if we change to 59, oh, looks like 59 is a prime number. However, if we were to say 87, oh, look at that. 87 is not prime, it's divisible by 3 and 29. And so that is an example of a while and for loop combined together. And that is going to wrap up our video. Thank you so much for joining me. I, I'm having so much fun creating these videos. I hope you have a wonderful day and hope you watch the next one.